Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. I'm going to show a time lapse. Uh, NASA produced time lapse. It wasn't something that I created or conjured up. Um, but a NASA time lapse of the Arctic ice. The ice in the Arctic as we know it for the most part is going to be non-existent either the next year or the year after. Um, it may even, if I'm not mistaken, be there this year. NASA has time lapse video of what the Arctic used to look like versus what it looks like now. And as I say this, be mindful that 2017 was the hottest year on record, just like the year before that and the year before that. We're doing this. People don't like to own up to the fact that human activity is doing this. Scientists, for the most part, like in the 90-something percentile, have agreed that human beings are doing this. And for whatever reason, using mystics or something else, you have some three or four people who say we disagree. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, let's show the video first. Yes, I'm slightly annoyed by this. Look, I there are plenty of things where I disagree with scientists on. My issue with this is it's a win-win. Like, like even if you didn't believe in climate change, but you said, "Hey, the solution to this is going to create jobs and everything else, and a better living space and better air and everything else," so I'm okay with that. Or if you say, oh my God, this is a threat. We need to do something about it. In both cases, it is a win-win. You're going to have a better fucking world from the standpoint of jobs and from the standpoint of your environment. But whatever. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the time lapse. In this animation, we're taking Arctic sea ice into the third dimension. Here, we're looking at the ice age, which is an indicator of thickness. Generally, older ice is thicker ice. And so what you see in this animation is, first of all, the ice pulsing out and in with the seasons. In, in winter, the ice grows out and expands outward. In summer, it contracts inward as it melts. In addition, you see the whiter ice, which is the older ice, moving around the Arctic, being pushed around by winds and currents that move the ice. And what you can see is over the years, the ice pulses around and it moves around. You know, it's wild. It looks like it's breathing. Like, it looks like it's, you know, like you take a breath. Like, it's, it's kind of um, expansion and contraction. Yes, I'm applying human characteristics to Down Earth. Towards the top along the coast of Greenland, you see that the older ice eventually moves out of the Arctic and into the North Atlantic where it melts. But the ice gets replenished within the Arctic because some of the ice survives each summer and, and grows older. And particularly in a region north of Alaska called the Beaufort Sea, where the ice spins around in a clockwise direction called the Beaufort Gyre. And that ice can keep spinning around oftentimes for several years and gradually getting older and thus getting thicker. Eventually, the ice will spin out of that gyre and go out through Fram Strait. But in the past, what has happened, we've always had enough ice growth and ice aging, enough ice surviving the, the summers to replenish the older ice that's lost. But in recent years, we've seen less replenishment. There, there's been more melt during the summer, and so the ice that goes out through Fram Strait has not been compensated by the ice growth. In addition, especially in recent years, we've seen some pretty remarkable things in the, in the Beaufort Sea where that area that used to be a nursery for the development of the older ice allow the, the young ice to age and mature. What we've seen instead is the ice is now more broken up, more scattered, and that's allowing the older ice to melt within the Beaufort Sea. So we're seeing the Beaufort Sea go from a nursery to a graveyard for older ice. And as we get towards the, the more recent years, much of that oldest ice, the ice that's older than five years old in the bright white, has almost virtually disappeared from the Arctic Ocean. And the Arctic is now dominated by younger and thinner ice. That's amazing. That's utterly amazing. Like, as human beings, we're stuck in, in, in our time period. Like, so it's hard for us to step outside of our time period and kind of look down on the thing and see how things are. So it's like a frog in water or something. It's like as it heats up, you don't necessarily know that it's heating up because you're not necessarily paying it to the minute temperature differences over a period of time. But when you can actually look at this and you say, holy shit, that's, that looks bad. 
You can see it with your own eyes. That looks bad. There's other models that NASA has put out showing warming, where it shows this kind of warming trend that takes place over the top of over Earth over the course of X number of years. I, look, I think this is a win-win. I, I, it's aggravating um, when you have some people saying, hey, we could get more oil when that ice melts. Like, like this is a fundamental misunderstanding of, of reality at this point. Our climate is warming. We can see it in the effects. This is not one of those things that is invisible to us at this point. We can see it in the world and the weather and in phenomena around us with regards to weather. Even, even if you don't believe it. Like, that's the part that gets me, right? So, look, I, there's, there are things that I think physicists are wrong on, fair enough. But this is one of those things where it's across the gambit, not just across the gambit. It's, if you are wrong, it is catastrophic. If I am wrong, you just get a better world. Like, I'm not going to harp. And because the point of this was to show the warming trend itself. But there are several dire effects that come along with this thing of the temperature warming. You're talking about two, three degrees. People always put the model out to 2100. What happens beyond 2100? Like, and that's assuming that the methane that's not leaking from that particular spot. In fact, there's a, a, a Ottawa um, scientist that I'm going to see if I can get on. The methane leaking from that spot may spike the temperature up in a way that's not necessarily forecasted in the models itself. Meaning, we're not doing anything about it, first. And second, it may be worse than what they're forecasting. Like when NASA was looking at this, they trended, or the model was trending towards the worst aspects of their model. But that model doesn't take into account a sudden spike based on some kind of methane release that has that that packs more heat than just the carbon itself. All right, I, I'm not gonna hurt. I'm not gonna bitch. I'm not more than I've bitched. I've done many videos on this thing of climate. I'm probably gonna do many more on this thing of climate. Um, I've done many videos on the effects of carbon, how that carbon affects food that we eat, lowering the nutritional content of food we eat. I've done videos talking about us, the how the West, um, the sperm count has gone down by 40%. Look, I, I just try to make this point that the way we're living is antagonistic to life. That's the only point that I try to make. When I do these videos and I try to point this out, we can have debates on how people should be arranged and everything else. But if the way that we're arranged is destroying life itself, meaning it destroys the ability for you to even have the debate of how you should live your lives, then I think you're wrong. Now, you can be, you know, fatalistic and say there's no point to anything, so, you know, I can have this particular disposition. But even in that, you're wrong, because that particular disposition assumes consistency. Meaning, however you're coming to the, I guess my point is this, I'm saying this in a weird way. Whatever discussion or debate or conversation that we're having about how the world should be arranged and how we should interact with one another, we should, at the very least, bake into the cake that if your arrangement is unsustainable and if your arrangement is inconsistent with our ability to exist, then your arrangement is wrong. This arrangement is wrong. I don't say that from a moral point of view. I say that just from a logical point of view of if existence is kind of the point and if us being here is kind of the point and if we are no longer here, no, the universe will not weep for us, but at the same token, a lot of people will be kind of pissed off at that, then your perspective of it is wrong. This needs to change. From a humanistic point of view or from any point of view that wants to persist life, this needs to change. We're killing ourselves. And I, I think the most terrifying aspect of this is there's no push to change anything. No push to change anything. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. I, I, I get annoyed by this because it's, it feels like the, the, look, our issue here goes beyond just um, from a technological point of view. We have it all. Like, like we're beyond that point of scarcity. If we didn't want scarcity, we were beyond that point of scarcity. Understand what I'm saying. We were able to marshal. In World War II, the United States was able to marshal 
uses corporations, uses industry and everything else. The government, yes, was loot, giving the stuff money in order to push out this war effort and everything else. But we provided enough um, armaments to supply, the, for the most part, the entire war effort and put two military like battalions on both sides of the globe. We have the capacity to make sure everybody on this planet has everything that they need. China by itself has the capacity to make sure everybody on this planet has everything that they need. We are beyond this issue of scarcity. Scarcity at this point becomes a choice. That is part of the most aggravating aspect of what I do and what I try to get across to people, that the way they see the world and the way they think the world has to be is off. The world could be any way that you want the world providing. You deal with the consequences of that arrangement. And these are the consequences of that arrangement, including what is taking place with our climate and what these guys are showing you on this globe, meaning the Arctic losing its ice and all the consequences that come from that. Um, I'm going to put an article at the bottom detailing some of the consequences of that ice melting. I'm not going to do it in this video because it will get too long and it will be too dry. So I will just leave it there for you to read it for yourself. Um, We could change this. It's a choice that we don't make. So, all right. If you enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support the patron. Thanks, guys.